Good evening, and thanks so much for joining us tonight from our Midtown studios. I'm Christy McDonald. There is a lot to talk about tonight, starting off with a new poll showing that Common Core standards are supported by a majority of voters in Michigan, even though many acknowledge they know little about what it really is. Plus, the State Bar of Michigan wants an end to secretly funded judicial campaign ads. The group wants Secretary of State Ruth Johnson to require disclosing where the funds came from to pay for those ads. And earlier this week, news that emergency manager Kevin Orr may offer retirees a stipend to buy health insurance on the new marketplace exchange. Also coming up tonight, state lawmakers are looking to expand current Michigan law that could mean you'll pay sales tax on purchases made online. Also in Lansing, there is talk of legalizing pot. Michigan lawmakers could take up the measure later this fall. And Wayne County Commissioner Laura Cox says she wants an emergency manager in Wayne County. So we're going to start there tonight with our contributors, Nolan Finley, the editorial page editor of the Detroit News, and Stephen Henderson, the editorial page editor of the Detroit Free Press. Gentlemen, what a week. How are you? We're, we're well. <laughs> You're very well. <laughs> uh, things can't be said the same for Wayne County, though. Well, no, Wayne County's in a world of hurt, and, you know, we've been paying attention to Detroit, and that's been to the benefit of Bob Ficano and Wayne County because nobody's writing a whole lot about them, giving them a whole lot of attention. But if you look at their numbers, their numbers are almost as bad as Detroit. They just passed a new budget that's still in deficit after Andy Dillon, the treasurer, put them on a program for the past year. They still can't balance their budget, and their pension liability is just huge. They're 60% underfunded in pension. If Detroit weren't in emergency management, I bet uh, they would have put, uh, the governor would have put Wayne County under emergency manager. He just didn't, doesn't want them both there at the same time. Well, why would he want both of them at the same time? If the county needs help, the county needs help here well, in the end, right? Well, yeah. and, and, and look, look, look at it this way. You have Detroit under emergency management. You have Highland Park uh, about to go back under Detroit uh, emergency management. You have Detroit schools. You had eCourse uh, that was under emergency management, and now you have uh, uh, Allen Park uh, that, so, so that, that is going bad. there. I, I think the problem is that, that essentially the whole jurisdiction is in trouble, and so uh, sending another emergency manager actually not going to fix the problem. I think you've got to start thinking about uh, a different way to do government and to deliver services uh, in, in big urban places like this. Uh, and, and that's been, I think, lurking in the background of this conversation for a long time. And we don't have anybody yet coming up with an idea, really, to say, here's how we should do it differently. Uh, but, but putting Wayne County under emergency management really won't solve the problems there. Uh, because, again, you've got all these jurisdictions inside it that are going bankrupt, too. We've got to figure out a better way mm, to do this. Dave, the problem in Wayne County is competent leadership, incompetent leadership. You've got... It's part of the problem. You, it's a huge part of the problem. Yeah. Bob Ficano just squandered $120 million on a jail project that's going nowhere. Before that, it was $35 million on the Guardian building, $35 million on a racetrack. Who builds a racetrack in this day and age, a horse racing track? Well, That's $200 gotta, million dollars of the people's money. You can have all kinds of restructuring. But that the way stuff you is govern. actually not driving the insolvency in Wayne County. What's driving it the insolvency is the pension money. costs, You've got to service that debt. the jail. Uh, the you know the, the the current jail the operation of yeah, the, the, the Wayne County Sheriff's Department. Let's talk about, Department. Jail, Let's talk about how they manage the pension. Uh, yeah. That's a management no question, issue. No question. But even if you straighten all that stuff out, you're still talking about places uh, that's losing revenue and and tax revenue and and population in a way that means it, it's very difficult. It's going to be very difficult to sustain. But the okay, service let me, let me you ask, got a guy, Christy. Just to, we talk. He mentioned pension. You got a guy who just retired from Wayne County, 41 year old, is going to co collect nearly a hundred thousand a year for the rest of his life plus health care that's not a structural problem that's where, a where, where, where are those deals where are those deals I, I, I'm looking I, I, for but I let, me, let me ask you this about Laura Cox is she sharing some of the blame did the commissioner share well, some of the blame here she's been a lone here? voice for for reason there I mean she's the only Republican on that board a lone and voice really she's uh, a lone not voice for reason she's been a, people on the on the well they have been saying the same they haven't been speaking up they pretty much let Ficano Run are, the wait, are they part of the problem, though? They Should they have been a little bit more stringent with what they're of, doing? They're a little bit of the problem, but, it, it, you know, it's, they're a legislative body, just like Detroit City Council. They get the budget 
from Fecano and can make changes to it. It's not like well, yeah, they're uh, not blameless they're, in this whole thing, right? right? Yeah, so, and, but, but Laura is a very a very good lawmaker. Laura actually should run for county executive. Well, she probably this time. is. Is and that's this, what is this, is this the trial her, balloon? She, is she kind of floating a trial balloon I don't here? Know. There's no question that that if you were going to run for for county executive next year, this is the exact kind of thing you would do or say to, to raise stand your profile. Out in front of it and say, hey, and it's not a bad move, right? I don't. But the, uh, but the conventional wisdom is that a Republican can't win that office in in Wayne County. But if she's running against Bob Fecano next time, if she Bob Fecano win. manages yeah. to get through a Democratic primary and in a crowded primary ballot, he could get through. If she's running against Bob Fecano, she wins going away. All right, let's turn now to Detroit. Detroit Emergency Manager Kevin Orr is floating a new plan to replace current health care benefits for retirees under 65 as he continues to move the city through the bankruptcy process. Published reports say the plan would provide $125 as a stipend for retirees to buy health care insurance on the new marketplace, which opens on October 1st as part of the new Affordable Care Act. Now, we heard kind of these details coming out in June. Do you think uh, the, the committee uh, representing the retirees are going to go? for this well not willingly I think that's some tough stuff 125 bucks a month doesn't even get you started on an insurance premium for retirees that may be what 20 percent of what they need and it's it, it's hard this to, is it's really hard to know. that's really a tough move that's almost as harsh as the pension uh, sacrifice he's asking them for yeah it's pretty it's it's pretty it's a pretty drastic cut I think one question uh, and we won't know until they get it get it up and running what will be the the least expensive plan you can buy under this exchange I think Blue Cross uh, who plans to participate in the exchange plans to offer some pretty low-cost uh, uh, plans um, the other question is whether how many of these people will be qualified for Medicaid I mean right. we're expanding Medicaid uh, in the state as part of the Affordable Care Act as well some of these people may be able to get picked up that way but but I mean uh, again this is uh, this is the thing that 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 uh, that that says this is why you don't go bankrupt people are <laughs> gonna get hurt that's uh, right. I mean there is no easy way to balance the city's books and that means taking money from from places that you don't want to have to take it from and this is <laughs> and that's where most yeah. of the money six million dollars of this um, or six billion dollars of this debt is of the, un right? of the unfunded yeah. liability that, that's health care so you I mean, you think that health care is going to go unscathed is, is, is just dreaming. It can't. You know, I also want to bring up the article that was in the Free Press today about the relationship or the lack thereof between Kevin Orr and Dave Bing and how Dave Bing basically feels like he's out on an island. And when you look at the chart that you guys put in the paper saying everybody that's reporting to Orr right now and, and what Dave Bing really has to do, it's, it's a very interesting, it, it's, it's not surprising though to you, Nolan. Well, no, he's, you're giving me that look where you're, that you're not surprised. Well, you've got an emergency manager. This is not a, a joint um, rural situation. Yeah, but didn't you they say that the there schools. was supposed to be some, at least well, some sure, working together? Sure. They did that to make everybody feel good. But if you look at the schools, and the school's emergency manager, the superintendent is gone. They're, and the school board is off on, on the side, more or less. I mean, there's still some, some you know, show interaction but it doesn't mean anything that's what emergency manager is he's a dictator and he's there for a short period of time to get things done. yeah and uh, what well, I also think uh, one of the interesting things will be to see what happens after the election when we have a new mayor who will get control of the city back once uh, Kevin leaves and they declare the emergency over I think you might see more of a, of a cooperative relationship at that mm -hmm. point because uh, wait, wait a minute. Let me, stop, let me stop you. You, you think there's going to be more of a cooperative relationship at that point when Kevin leaves, no. or in January I when think, you've got a new mayor I think after the election, in. because because he's uh, you've got to you've got to be able to leave an intact administration to to, to govern this place uh, after emergency management, and you're not going to be able to do that uh, if you're just keeping yeah, them but that's completely just, out of that's things. just one side of the equation. You, you've got to wonder if you're Kevin Orr, do you hope Napoleon wins or Duggan wins? You know, you can see Benny sort of um, going along and, and not making a whole lot of waves. I can't see Duggan not making a whole lot of waves. He doesn't, he, he is not going to be content to sit in the sidelines, well, you know, to wear himself. his golf shirt to work like Bing <laughs> does. He is going to want a piece of this. He's, he didn't run you really, and you, spend all this you, money on the sidelines. You really think that, that Benny Napoleon, though, would just sit there and well, I think, he, Yeah, I think he I don't think. think I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what kind of what? faith? I think the question is, what kind of faith will Kevin Orr have in Benny Napoleon as 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 mayor? And I don't know that either of us can answer that right now. No. I think there's more likely a chance that he will have faith in in someone like Mike Duggan, who's run major operations before, 
they have a little more in common. But Duggan's uh, whole thing throughout this campaign is, I'm going to go to Lansing on day one yeah, and well, say, get rid of Kevin Orr. I can do everything he can't. I uh, think the clash of egos is going to be enormous. I think, I'll tell you this. I think Benny, uh, the, Benny's personality would be more conciliatory, and I think he would... I'll so tell you, you think this. it would be behind detrimental? Behind the scenes now, behind the scenes now, uh, there have been talks uh, between the Duggan folks and people in Lansing about what should happen uh, a after this election. And I, I, I think there's- Are they telling him to tone it down? Uh, I, well, I think, there's, I think there's, there's no intention to freeze out the mayor in, to the extent that Dave Bing is frozen out now after the election. You can't do it. If you're gonna leave next September or October, you have got to start preparing uh, elected leadership to lead and to govern. Uh, and, and, you know, Mike Duggan's saying a lot of things right now on the campaign trail. It's stuff designed to, to be campaign fodder, right? That's, how you, that's how you win elections. I think once we get closer to the actual day of inauguration in Detroit uh, of the new mayor, you'll, you'll see a change in that relationship. It will, the, the, the pugnaciousness will be toned down and there will be more of a cooperative uh, tone. So you don't blame Kevin Orr for the relationship or the lack thereof right now with Dave Bing. I think the, the I think there are a lot of reasons that the relationship with Dave Bing didn't work out the way either side thought it would mm -hmm. uh, initially. I mean, initially these two liked each other uh, and thought that that they'd have a, a good partnership. I think when Kevin got here uh, and saw how things were operating inside the city, they, that that went away. It cooled. Uh, and think about it. Think of how badly uh, this administration has managed the city for four years. Uh, part of the reason we're in this in this situation is because this administration didn't act swifter on uh, things like how about you know making your budget. Uh, there's something like 15 city departments that run over budget every year. But you know, um, God, Christy, I mean, one hurts. of the things that 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 is interesting to me is this mayoral race is having trouble getting its head above the bankruptcy Wait, news you, and everything you else. I mean, you don't hear it's, you don't hear as much about it. it. It's certainly not getting the attention that um, no. past mayoral well, races. Well, it's a little don't. early too, right? Well, it's past week post week after Labor Day. Post Labor Day, that's when you go into yeah. to full run, and I haven't seen it. Why? Uh, well, Why? I think one of the reasons is somebody's taken a beating, right? I mean, uh, Napoleon got beat bad. In, in the in the primary, and there's no indication that he's done anything or, or seized any opportunity to make up that ground. It's really hard, What's I think, for say? people. Have you seen I think the, both both campaigns will tell you that their internal polling says this is this is still a very broad. There's still a very broad gap between the two candidates, mm -hmm. uh, as much as 20 points, uh, and so. I, you know, what's the 20, campaign, 20 what should the campaign, well, that's what he lost by. He lost by 20 points, he lost by 23 yeah, points, actually, uh, in, in the primary. So what so role will turnout play? I mean, you know, I've always thought that a low turnout favored Duggan, but if it's a 20, if the polls are showing 20 points. You have to, the, the only path for Napoleon to make that ground up is with new voters, people who did not show up. As Kilpatrick did the prior, As Kilpatrick did. Well, but, and that was but, very but think about it this way. Kilpatrick but, increased the turnout from primary to general by 72% in mm -hmm. 2005 was the most ever in history. Right. Benny would have to, to, to better that, in fact, to make up the gap that he has right now. So All right. It's and interesting that Benny hasn't changed his message either. I mean, he's still sticking to that same message. I'm the guy who knows what it's like to live in Detroit. He doesn't know what it's like to live in Detroit. Didn't work in the primary. I don't know. People aren't buying it. No, Voters are not gotta, buying He's got to change it. And there, of course, there's going to be there's going to be debates, right? Well, we hope there should so. be. There, there should be. be. They I need think to come like right on this show. That's right. And Public television. Welcome That's to my week at any time. Mr. Duggan and Mr. Polly. Uh, <laughs> this is the most effective debating format. It's been proven that way over the last few years. Gets more coverage statewide and locally than any other um, any other outlet. I think Nolan just did a commercial for yes. us. Are we even allowed to Well, do actually, Nolan and I are looking forward uh, to having the other WADL debate. You know, the uh, circus, yeah, that's circus that's ring canceled. two. Right? <laughs> All right, stop. We're going to move on. Well,